All right, on page 300 of your student journal, we're going to take some notes. There's not a lot of space, but there should be enough space to put what we're needing to. So you don't have to draw this whole example out, but we're talking about compound events today. Compound events today are easy to see when they're in a Venn diagram. So for example, how many of you are gamers? We like to play video games, okay? Back when uh, they first, I think it, this was actually in 2013, um, when they were at the, the one of the um, consumer products shows in Vegas, they listed all of the different games that were available for Xbox One and X and PS4. So anything that is in this middle area. These are the games that were available for both titles. So a lot of you decide what, which kind of gaming console to buy based on whether you can play that particular game that you like, that series, that franchise that you like over the other video game console. Is there, I didn't even, I tried to look and I didn't have a lot of time. Is there a lot of, there's no overlap with Wii and anything else, is there? Yeah, so they're just kind of in their own little Venn diagram that has nothing to do with PS4. Right, but do they do they interact? Can you get Final Fantasy IV on the Wii, for example? If it's a GameCube, you can. Okay, so that's good to know. So, um, for the most part, what we're looking at here is some vocabulary and some terminology. Thank you very much. Okay, so... The word union is going to mean either of the two events, okay? So when I ask you for a union, I'm asking you how many of these are in either of the two circles, okay? That's what union means. So union I circled in red. Intersection in probability speak, is the overlap, what they have in common. So if we're talking about the intersection of these two, we're talking about, and this is going to look funny because it's, okay, I guess it is purple. What do they have in common? Where do those two Venn diagrams overlap? And if we talk about disjoint or mutually exclusive, we're talking about two events that have nothing in common. Okay, so I was kind of hoping that the Wii, without the GameCube idea, didn't have anything in common because then it would be disjoint from PS4 games. Does that make sense? Wherever there's no overlap whatsoever. Okay, so to put some of this into your notes, the probability of compound events, okay? Probability of compound events says that if A and B are two different events, then the probability of A or B is going to be P of A or B, and we add up the A, the probability of A, to the probability of B, and we take away their overlap. Okay? So on your quiz yesterday, and this is where probability is kind of strange. On your quiz yesterday, we asked you for the probability of A and B. Remember that? Okay. And in probability, when you hear the word and, you're not supposed to think of a sum. Okay. In our normal world, 5 and 3 is how much? When someone says 5 and 3, 8, right? What do we do? We add them up, okay? In probability, the probability of A and B means that we take the probability of A and we multiply it by the probability of B, okay? And we had problems like that on our quiz. But the probability of A or B means that we're adding. 
okay? Probability of A and B, you multiply. Probability of A or B, you add. Okay? Yep, one of the cornerstones. Yes, sir. Um, because why don't they attach them together as variables? They're using their own symbolism, their own symbology, so that it doesn't get confused by the others, if that makes sense. Um, when we have different branches of mathematics, we try to kind of keep them a little bit separate and then show you the connections between them. That way there's, it's odd, because the, the, the nice thing about mathematics is it's a universal language. You can take a kid, you can look at a, at, at a textbook in Korea or in Germany or in Yugoslavia, and you could probably do the math fairly well. You won't understand the explanations, but you can, the symbolism's the same. And that, that's where they're going with that. Yep, it's because of that symbolism. Okay? So everybody okay with this part? Now, because these are compound events, these things are related, do you see that if I want the probability of a, of a title being in Xbox One or in PS4, I need to add up how many Xbox One titles there are. So how many Xbox One titles do we see? How many titles are here, guys? And... 21 for a total of 52. 52 was the number I was looking for, okay? 52 Xbox One titles, okay? How many PS2s or PS4s? 52 as well. But we have an overlap, don't we? That aren't exclusive to one maker or the other. So we have to take away the 31 that is not exclusive to either either game console. Does that make sense? Now, you and I are probably just going to say, hey, let's take 31 plus 21 plus 21, right, and call it good. That's another way of doing it. But if we take all the titles that are available for Xbox One plus all the titles that are available for PS4, and then we take away the ones that they have in common, we have the number of titles that we're looking at. Okay. Now that's not a probability here. Yeah, actually, we are, we're good. That's our probability. So what would this number be? And how many do we have all together? Seventy-three. No, hold on. So, and we we didn't do this quite right because what's probability always? A number divided by total, right? Okay, so we have a total of 30, 40, 50, 60, 73, okay? So 52 70 thirds plus 52 70 thirds minus 31 70 thirds, okay? That would be our probability. So 52 and 52 is 104 70 thirds minus 31 70 thirds is how much? Seventy-two, seventy-thirds, right? Fifty-two and, and fifty-two is one hundred four, and one hundred four minus thirty-one is seventy-three. Did we have seventy-three all together? Okay. So fifty-two plus fifty-two minus thirty-one. Something's not right here. What did we do wrong? Twenty. How many are fifty-two? Fifty-two. 
Okay, well, I'll come back to that one. I'm not sure what we did wrong. So, but it shouldn't be a, a, a hundred percent, okay? Because if we want to know how many are in one or the other, we shouldn't be getting a hundred percent. I don't know. I don't think I have notes on this. Okay. All right. So let's talk about disjoint events. Okay. Disjoint events. Notice we have the same formula here, except we're not taking anything away. Okay. Why aren't we taking anything away? These kind of look like chocolate chip cookies, don't they? Are they unique chocolate chip cookies? They're not smushed together. Nobody got them too close to each other in the pan, right? So they're not overlapping at all. So there's no overlap here. So there is no, no um, overlap that we have to take away. So if you want to memorize this formula and just realize that with no overlap, you're taking away zero, that's okay. Okay? All right, so let's look at the next example. All right, so this is a place that you can, or in your, on your notes page, you have a little spot for notes toward the bottom, okay? And this is a place where you can write those. So I'm not expecting you to write up all the dies, okay? Exactly. So, yep, you can take your, your picture out if you want to see something closer. So first of all, two-sided die, two six-sided die are roll, rolled. What's the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is a multiple of 4 or is a 5? There, let's put it away, please. Okay. So we're looking for the probability of something or something else. Probability of A or B. Okay. In this case, we're going to say, what's the probability that we get the sum is a multiple of 4 Or the probability that the the, um, the probability of A or B that it is a five. Okay. So, how many of these are multiples of four? Is 2 a multiple of 4? 3? 4? Okay, so 4 is a multiple of 4. 5? Five. 5 a multiple of 4? Four. 5 divided by 4 doesn't come out evenly, right? 6? 7? 3? 4, right? 5, 6, 7, how about 8? Okay. 4? Five, six, seven, eight, not nine, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven, eight. You noticing a pattern here? Nine, ten, eleven. They're all in the diagonal, aren't they? And then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? So we have what for our probability? of multiples of four. How many? Nine. Nine out of how many? I, I get a twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine out of how many? Oh, I missed one. Thank you. But that's that should be a 5 and a 6. I have a bad a bad die. This should have been a 5. Because they went 5, 4, 5, 5. That should be a 5. Good catch. Bad picture from the internet. Okay. So 9 out of how many different rolls did we have there? Is it supposed to be a 5? Because in this row, they started with 5, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6. So they put, someone copied and pasted a 6 in that spot instead of a 5. 
So this, this is where the 6-6 is supposed to be. Okay, I'll have to change my slide for next year. Okay, so how many dice have we, how many rolls do we have total? 36. All right, that's our, that's our P of, of A, or P of a sum of multiple of four. I'm not writing this well. So we need to have the probability of the multiple of four plus the probability of it being a five minus the probability of multiples of four and a five. Okay, the sum is a five. Okay, so 936. Now, how many of them have a sum of five? There's one, right? Two. Three. Four. Is there any other way that we can get a five? The sum is a five. No. Are there any? Is there any overlap here? Yes. Where can we also get, also get a sum of five? Um, that'll be a multiple. This time they're just saying what is a sum? The sum of the numbers is a multiple of four or is exactly a five. They add up to five. So we're not looking at multiples each time. Okay, so do these two even, even overlap? No, we have nothing that we circled that also has an arrow by it, right? So we don't have to take away anything. So our multiples of 4 was 936. Our uh, sum of being 5 is a total of 4, 36. We don't have to take anything away because they don't overlap. So we have a total of 13, 36. And that's as reduced as it gets. Make sense? Okay. All right, next example. So a randomly selected card from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. What's the probability that it is a face card or a spade? Okay. So our A means that it's a face card. B is that it's a spade, and we want the probability of A or B. It's the probability that it's a face card or a spade. Whenever you see an or, you have to add. Okay. So how many face cards do we have in a standard deck of playing cards? You, you can look at the 16, jacks, kings, and queens, right, times four suits, total of 12, okay? So we have 12 face cards out of 52, plus how many spades in, a, in the deck? Thirteen, right? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. So thirteen fifty seconds. But now we have to take away anywhere that they overlap. How many face cards or spades? Three. So we have to take away three fifty seconds. So twelve and thirteen is a total of twenty-five. Minus 3 is 22, so our answer is going to be 22, 50 seconds, and then we reduce it to 11 over 26, and we're done. I think I have a build on this one. Okay. So those were all of our face cards, those were all of our spades, and these were the face cards that were spades. Questions on this one? We're good? All right. Now we have a bag with some numbers in it. And this bag has numbers 1 through 20. And we're going to randomly pull a number out of that bag. 
Okay. What's the probability that the number on the card is a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 4? They're going to ask you multiple questions. They're going to ask you odds. They're going to ask you evens. They're going to ask you things like ending in zeros or divisible by 5. Okay? So how many of those, first of all, it's an or, so we know we're adding. How many of those are going to be multiples of 3? Three, 6, 9, the goose drank wine. Monkey chewed tobacco on the streetcar line. Right? Three, six, nine. Counting by threes, what's next? Twelve, fifteen, and eighteen. Okay? So how many do we have? Six. Six out of twenty are our multiples of three. And I'd write that up there every time you get an assignment so you keep remembering them. Okay? So that's 6 20th. That's our probability of A. Now, which ones are multiples of 4? Yep, counting by 4s now. 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. Okay? How many purple ones did I circle? 5. So... We're adding 5 twentieths. But what do we have to take away? The overlap. Which one overlapped? The 12. So we've got to take this guy away. And our result will be 10 out of 20, which reduces to 20. Okay, so half of the numbers between 1 and 20 are divisible by either 3 or 4, so that's our probability. Okay, does that make sense? Nothing too hard here, right? Just a lot of vocab again. Okay? Questions? All right. Now we've got, we're trying to make you hungry or thirsty. Got a breakfast at the cafe, and we've got some orders. Some were from or for orange juice, and some were for coffee. So, out of 45 customers at a breakfast cafe, 42 bought either a coffee or an orange juice. And if there were 30 customers who brought or bought orange juice and 40 customers who bought coffee, what's the probability of someone buying both coffee and orange juice? Probability of C and O. Christian, put it away, please, sir. Probability of coffee and orange juice. Okay. So and means bought both coffee and orange juice. Okay. So what are we going to do? What's the probability that they bought coffee? Forty out of forty-five. Okay. What's the probability that they bought orange juice? Thirty out of forty-five. Okay, so the probability that they bo bought both coffee and orange juice? I thought we said we added when we did or, right? So what's going to happen here? Can we just add those numbers up? Nope. B 
because we have to take away the overlap, the or, right? Okay. So we said our formula was the probability of coffee or orange juice was the probability of coffee plus the probability of orange juice minus the probability of coffee and orange juice. That's what we were saying before, right? Okay, so this time we're looking for coffee and orange juice, we're looking for this part of our formula. So it's not just a straightforward find two fractions and add them up. Okay. What is this 42 here for? Who bought one or the other, right? Okay, so that's our probability of coffee or orange juice. This is our 42 out of 45. That goes there. Okay. And how many of them bought coffee? 40 out of 45. How many bought orange juice? 30 out of 45. So if you want to find out this guy, we're going to have to combine these two, right? And take them to the other side. So what is 40 plus 30? 75 or 70. So 42 out of 45 equals 70 out of 45 minus this probability of coffee and OJ. Okay. So what do we have to do to get the probability of coffee and OJ by itself? Take that 70 over out of 45 to the other side, right? Okay. So if we subtract from both sides, we're going to get what? Twenty-eight? Twenty-eight forty-fifths? Negative twenty-eight forty-fifths, but that's going to be a negative. probability of coffee and OJ. So my probability of coffee and OJ is 2845. Okay. So it's not always going to be just plug them in, add them up. Sometimes you're going to have to find this piece. Okay. And you'll know that piece. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. You guys took this one down as notes? Or did you just watch? Give you some time to write it down if you didn't. A lot of writing. Watch for your ends and your oars. I wanted to know how many brunette girls like ice cream, and I was counting them all up, 
I would have to subtract the the brunette girls because they would be counted twice if I wanted if I counted all the girls and I counted all the brunettes. The people with brown hair would be in that count, and so would all the girls. But girls with brown hair would be in the count. That's why you subtract. Okay, you guys kind of get that where the subtraction part is. You, you subtract it because otherwise you're counting that category twice. And then they get over, yeah, they get overrepresented then if, if they're counted twice. So that's where that formula, and then so if I was looking for something that didn't overlap, then I wouldn't have to subtract. That's why I make the two points up here because there's nothing that overlaps. But you can, mem you can memorize that one formula and just realize that sometimes there'll be zero because they have nothing in common. Okay? If there's no overlap, you're not taking anything away. Okay? because it's not, not counterintuitive to what we're used to, okay? So your assignment is going to be pages 301 and 302 of your student journal, okay? Got lots of time today to work, 